So there's absolutely no other reason you wanted to be in this review. No. None whatsoever. I saw the movie with you. You did see the movie. Yeah, you see, I you did. see a lot of movies with me. Yeah, I did. But this one in particular, <laughs> you wanted to review with me. Sure. Just bored. Okay then. <laughs> you say it's more a biopic of Doug Kenny or more of a history of National Lampoons? Uh, kind of s- starts with him. It funnels in National Lampoons story and then it ends with him. So you kind of find out more about National Lampoons through him. It's interesting where it kicked off. It turned out in a fashion, kind of like Facebook, where it started off strictly as a college thing, ended up actually snowballing into something a heck of a I lot bigger. Not, I did not know that. They acknowledge that not a lot of this is not accurate 100%. Like, oh, these are mm. all the things that we cut out. These are all the people who aren't acknowledged. <laughs> so they just started pretty much at college. They're like, forget everything else. This is where it starts. This is the point that anything important happens. Yeah, we seem to be hitting a nice stride in biopics recently now where they are acknowledging, yeah, you can't take everything listed here as gospel because how do you condense a life into a anywhere range from a 90 minute to a two hour movie they sugarcoat and then they don't sugarcoat but they're kind of open about it like, yeah even and even people who are associated to doug kenny and nash lampoons they don't have a problem painting them in a negative light either in particular um chevy chase <laughs> that's as, the best casting i think possible in this yeah movie. one of the best things about this movie is uh chevy chase is played by joel McHale. And if for anyone who knows about the behind-the-scenes dramas of Community, you get this vibe that this might be revenge. I like to give him credit. He did a great job. He did do a great job. A really- the cast is led by Will Forte, who plays Doug Kenny. Um, this was a this was a change compared to what we were used to. I mean, we saw him in uh, MacGruber. I think that was the first time both of them. That was a while ago. That was a long time ago. I mean, I watched him a couple episodes of um, Last Man on Earth, which he carries that show really well. Well, a lot of the people are recognizable, like, you've seen them in other things, but they do become whoever it is that they are. Like, yeah. I, I never got taken out, except for Seth Green, just because I see Seth Green, yeah, that's all I see. exactly. Seth Green But loved, he's, like, a little bit... It, it, he's, he's a background cameo. He play he does a cameo as a Christopher Guest, but I will say the actor they had to play, um, Ivan Reitman. Oh, my God. Oh. I, I don't know who that person is, but... He was exactly. a, that was, was a virtual really creepy. Yeah. I mean the guy that had standing in for John Landis is easy just bury him in facial fuzz and <laughs> it, it looks so fake. It was an exact oh, that wait, was a wait, caricature. Wait. It goes into one my like, one critique maybe. Okay, of what was film. it? Uh, <laughs> Anything that has to do with hair. The other actor we forgot to mention that's in this movie is uh, Donald Gleason. He plays uh, Kenny's best friend since college who was with him at the beginning of National Lampoons. It handles the business side, but still funny at the same time. Yeah, he had a good sense of humor, but yeah, he all but also kept him in check. Yeah, from getting unruly and a little out of whack. He himself c- conducts himself with the grace and the dignity, dignity and the humor. His his hair, on the other hand, not so no, much. I think that was compensating out because I suppose so. <laughs> it got worse. I do costume work. I know wigs. I'm I'm watching this thing get worse and worse. I'm like. They knew they were doing that. They were like, <laughs> yes, it's the 70s. We're just going to make this even more. Oh, it's the 80s. We'll make it even worse. And what's even funnier, it wasn't just him. Uh, oh, we no, had, it was ever, a lot We of had people. Matt Lucas, you know, who we all oh know and love God, as, who, who we know and love as Nardole from Doctor Who and Little Britain. He He's in there, too. And he's play, he has this absurd blonde wig. It's, and well, uh, John Landis, I, I think they taped that. Yeah. Or, that um, carpet to his face. And then there was Natasha Leone, who played, like, the only woman writer in National like Lampoons. Her. Oh, I loved her to death. Yeah, but she. Had, but anyone who knows her knows she's very blonde. Stapled I, on this. I think that was the joke, because nobody yeah. really was getting away. Actually, Will Forte, sometimes his sideburns look like they, you take it, like, <laughs> cut out some carpet off the ground, <laughs> stuck them onto his face. I mean, it was... Not, it did take me out of the movie, but that's something I couldn't Us, ignore. It was, it was something we couldn't ignore, but oddly enough, still added to the charm of the movie. Yeah, so it, it was it stuff did. like that which, which lent to I, it. You're like, what? Are you sure there's no reason you're in this review? No reason whatsoever. None whatsoever. Okay, I'll buy it. For Will Forte, given what we've seen him do before, and certainly known as a comedy actor, he handled himself no, he pretty pretty well in certain parts. I will say when it came to the, to the latter parts, when he starts succumbing to cocaine addiction and among other vices, I don't know if he was pushing it far enough. 
I don't think they wanted to. I think the film did want to keep that comedy level, yeah. considering its source. It didn't want to go too heavy Take with it the darker side. But it didn't hide from that either. I mean, they kind of almost played the drugs a little on the comedic side, but it was sadly true. Like, mm -hmm. you could believe this is the way it was, unapologetic, but you also saw that it was still a bad thing. The, another thing they didn't shy away from is that when the scenes got uncomfortable, deliberately so, they felt uncomfortable. There's a particular scene where he crashes a press junket for Caddyshack, mm -hmm. and that scene feels... That was uneasy. It's it's especially when I'm, we're not gonna spoil this part. But there's a, a cer certain characters close to the, to Doug Kenny who are there that really hit the nail in the coffin. When it needs to get serious, it gets serious. But for the most part, it is really really funny. Matter of fact, one of the best things about it, and this is what I was saying earlier about it being savvy about biopics, it did subvert a little bit of expectations, and I'm ashamed that I did not recognize Martin Mull, their narrator is making claims to be Doug Kenny at an older age. Okay, well, okay, so that means he's gonna be fine. He'll he'll get himself clean, because you know, we're seeing him as a, And I was like, I'm an idiot, it's Martin Mull. Yeah, if you know the history, you know where it's gonna go. I didn't know the history. I didn't, you didn't know the history. I didn't know, so I was like, what? But we both love the movie Clue. In our defense, I that movie- I feel so stupid. I, and you love Roseanne, and he's on Roseanne. I, it's like, I kept saying, yeah. I'm going, I've seen you before, yeah. but I thought maybe that's, oh, well, your dog, I totally, they tricked me. Yeah, we like, oh. we got tricked, and you know, I, I was very happy for it to do it, and to boot, it was a really interesting new way to convey the story in a biopic. It was It was refreshingly different. Even if you see it coming a mile away, it doesn't matter, it's still a really clever way to relay the story of a biopic. I'd say on that front, on a narrative level, it was definitely different compared to most other biopics. I'd still say I, Tanya wins this year for uh, most... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that but definitely wins out for... In case it was I, Tanya, though, that was more of a ridiculous story mm. of just people being stupid. And This was heartbreaking in the sense that the truth behind comedy is there's usually great sadness behind it. In any entertainer's case, especially when you're trying to profess in comedy, even on this channel when I'm trying to do comedy, it's hard because... There's a balance. There's on one side, if you don't go far enough, you're just harmless. You're you're not that interesting. You're not that interesting. But alternatively, if you go the other way around, you come off as obnoxious, abrasive, sometimes even desperate. There is a line that you yeah. don't want to go over. And, and it's, it's like, how far is the line? Where is the line? And the line moves with society. Exactly. With time, it changes. Yeah, because in essence, comedy is about misery. And National Lampoon's, at that time, comedy was still... Like the Walt, it was like the Brady Bunch. Well, the they make the, comments in the film where, oh, this is funny, this is funny, and then they make a joke about Nixon, and they're like, no, 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 you don't make that. It's like nowadays we'd make a joke about Nixon any day, yeah. but it was interesting to see where their lines actually were being put, and you're like, that's where you're going to, oh, but it was the seventies. It was a completely different time frame. So I definitely say another thing is movie definitely helped us appreciate about National Lampoons was. Probably be, were it not for their fearlessness, we wouldn't be living in a world today where we can flippantly make at least 20 Trump jokes today and still not meet our quota. Yeah, really. Exactly. We need that level of fearlessness, and that's where National Lampoon's... Well, that was even what they pitched when they made the magazine was, you know, this is during the Vietnam War was happening. Mm -hmm. People needed something to laugh at, but not just Mad Magazine. You need something a little bit harder. Because what's they're saying when you're an adult, you have to be serious. That's boring. Yeah. But this in this biopic is definitely not boring. It's it's interesting. Yeah. It makes you want to look online and find out the more specific facts now, about it. Now I will say the major con of this one, which I think will drop the uh, rating down a little bit, is that story wise, if you look at it, the story beats that usually are associated with biopics, it's nothing new. Yeah, we've seen all the stuff that we see him go through, and ultimately the resolution. It's stuff we've seen in countless other biopics, particularly of creative forces like yeah. i mean i was seeing beats of movies like the doors of a uh, man on the moon um which is something you maybe should take into consideration is creativity does breed from this type of misery the execution however is what makes it exactly. watchable or not exactly so interesting what makes up for the repetition is the fact that the presentation works the acting everyone was great everyone works and i will say it is funny Oh, yeah. It is incredibly funny. Very funny. So you definitely will get your time's worth on it. It's on Netflix right now. Definitely worth the watch. It's definitely worth the, I think it was about 100 minutes, I think. It was a, I, it was it was a, a, it was a good size. It was a breezy watch. So it was over, and I was like, aw. Yeah, just the scene where you get the, the uh, Henry gets the phone call. That yeah. was 
actually some I will give him credit for really good acting in yeah. the scene because I, I was like was it oh god you know and exactly. there's some really solid dramatic moments and then there's some juxtaposed out with out. really funny moments <laughs> yeah. so uh, definitely uh, recommended but I will say yeah it's nothing we have new we haven't seen so for that I'm gonna give it the final narcotic casserole rating of about three and a half. I go four. four. You go four. I go four. <laughs> Penalty removed for repetition and bad wigs. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think this is one of the greatest, most innovative biopics ever, or do you think you we've seen better? Leave it in the comments below. And for more addictive content than Narcotic Casserole, simply like, share, subscribe, click. Thou shalt be served. Okay, is that enough? <laughs> That's enough. <laughs>